Hey everyone, welcome to Real Talk episode 7. I'm here with Doug. Uh, he is a photographer, videographer, a bunch of things I guess. Um, I'm going to give you guys a brief intro of what he's up to and then we're going to have a conversation today about how to make more money doing photography. Okay, so from a very young age, Doug knew he wanted to work with cameras. He joined every class, course, club, and competition. It was a hobby, but maybe even more than that, an outlet to express himself growing up. He was browsing YouTube for videos about photography when he stumbled upon Chase Jarvis. It was then that he knew what he wanted to do with his life. Doug got his first paid gig when he was 15. It was $50, and since then he has dedicated his life to increasing his skills, knowledge, and experience in photography and videography. Originally, his company was named St. John Photography, but then he realized that he needed to offer video in order to offer more of his skills to his clients. He has since rebranded into Douglas Productions to increase the size of his team and offer a wider range of media creation. He's worked for some big clients such as Lawyer, Locate, Google, how do I pronounce this guy? Feldstein Family Law Group? Feldstein Family Law Group. Law Group. Beautiful Life <coughs> Studios and Sizzling Koi. He also worked on a personal level with names like Marcellus Bowman. Marcellus Bowman. Marcellus Bowman. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Bartels. CFL football player. And uh, Iskra Lawrence. Yes. Okay, see if I can pronounce these guys right. Yeah. His client base and quality of clients was rising very fast at a time that he had no idea what he was doing in terms of business administration. He would admit, as an artist, he was terrible with organization, articulating his thoughts, and socializing. These were all skills he had to teach himself fast and on the fly. He's currently focused on corporate work and his primary client base is law firms. Welcome, Doug. Thank you for having me. Perfect. So today's topic was the producer before. allowed me on. Yes. <laughs> well, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, Doug actually is the one producing AM Lifestyle, the brand, Real Talk, everything, so you're behind everything. So I guess as we get going, uh, really want to pivot into, I guess, when did you realize that you didn't know how to make money as an artist? Um, I know there's a difference between making money yes, and being an artist. Yes. So it was a hobby for me, for mm -hmm. sure, and I was taking photos of stuff that I liked and all that. And it was really when I decided to go to school for videography, well, for photography and videography, I went to Mohawk College. And I had a great, uh, probably one of the greatest mess ups of my life was the first project that I handed in to the professor. Because it was really artistic, it was fun, I was doing what I wanted to do. Yeah. So he's like, look, it, stop being an artist. If you want to turn this into your career and you want to be successful in life, stop being an artist. What you need to do is think about what people want to buy and work for your client. So that was a huge paradigm shift for me. Mm -hmm. And since then, so that was about three years ago, since then I've really been focused on selling my work. Okay. But prior to that, I had no idea what I was doing in terms of selling my work. I was like, oh, maybe people like this or I'll try this. And I wasn't really targeting people or anything like that. I had no business sense in terms well, of that because it's like any product, right? You're going to target a demographic. Mm -hmm. You're going to create a product that somebody you think is going to buy and adjust accordingly and all that. So, so what, what would you say to people that are intimidated by learning business? and also being an artist because really it's a whole new realm yeah so it's uh it's a hard thing to do um but i guess i don't have a choice i mean yeah that's what I'm <laughs> yeah there's no there's no choice basically if you want to turn your passion if your passion is photography and you want to turn it into a business mm -hmm. you have no choice but to learn the business so one thing that helped me a lot that i really got into was going to there's small business outreach centers everywhere. There's the one in Kitchener City Hall, one in Cambridge City Hall. They would say, yeah, with all the basics, that'd be probably where to start. And go online, do not waste your money on business school. Like, don't. Okay. You can learn, <laughs> you can learn, oh, and the best thing you can do, yeah, you can learn more in a one hour conversation with a CEO than you do in a month in class, honestly. So the best thing you can do is find people who are already doing it, whether it's photographers 
or whether it's financial advisors or what it is, it doesn't matter what they're doing. The business aspect to it and the sales aspect, they're pretty much the same. So go find people and know what they're doing in terms of business and shadow them. Just talk to them mm. and you'll learn a lot. So those are my, uh, that's how I learned at least. And those are my main tips for learning more about business. So what about gear getting started? Gear, oh, gear is a, gear is a problem. Cause like, okay, so yeah. I mean, I was in a Proust real talk and everything by myself, right? Yeah. So at yeah. that time I was that's doing, cute. I was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was doing research on things I would need. I bought the wide angle and it was cheaper than ninety dollars. Yeah. One thing I learned with the wide angle lens right away is that it just stores things. Yeah. And if you don't know that ahead of time, all of a sudden you just have everything looking like it's yeah, I don't yeah. know, like a circle. <laughs> uh, Heads in the corner of the frame, it looks all big. It was horrible. Yeah. It was horrible. Yeah. So I had a lot of that experience. But um, green screen, I mean these things seem relatively unaffordable, but as soon as you start getting to higher, you know, upper level cameras, you start spending thousands of dollars. Yeah. And yeah. so Absolutely. curious as to what you would say for somebody just starting to get clients, wants to make sure the quality of their work is good enough that they can actually get clients, but that they're not going broke to close a client. Yeah, absolutely. There's tons of affordable cameras out there right now. Mm -hmm. uh, hop on Kijiji, do all that stuff. But one of the best quotes, it's actually by Chase Jarvis, he's someone who inspired me my whole life. And he said, the best camera is the camera that you have available to you. So, you don't need the top of the line. You don't need to be shooting on a two, three thousand dollar camera to start your career. You don't need to make that massive investment to get with started. Your iPhone. And it's often an excuse. Mm. With your iPhone, why not? Don't bring your iPhone to a client, mm -hmm. but why not start building your portfolio with yeah. your iPhone? Yeah. If you have a quality camera on your iPhone, get to work. Okay. Honestly, if you have a lamp, you have a light. Mm -hmm. If you have a flashlight, you have a light. So I think that a lot of people get caught up in gear. And what I say is, is sure you can buy more gear, but more gear isn't gonna make you a better videographer. It's not gonna make you better at sales. Uh, it's not gonna make you a better photographer. So, um, what you need is you can't buy experience. So just put in the work, put in the time. You can't buy experience and you can't buy clients. Do things you can't buy. Yeah. That's all you, that's all hustle on your part. So if you focus, I find a lot of people focus too much on their gear. Mm. And then I see inexperienced people with no clients having this massive investment in gear and the gear just sits there. I'll tell you how I can relate to that in the uh, flip side with financial planning. Yeah. Okay. So I'll work with people and they're always insistent on if they could just have more professional looking business cards. Yeah. If they could just buy one more suit. Yeah. If it's they could, excuse. if they could just get into the door of that super expensive networking event because mm -hmm. if only they could reach higher level clientele they would make it already yeah you know and it's never that no it's never that it's no. always no when when you figure when out you get sales, your one you minute with it. that high level guy yeah. and you haven't put in thousands of hours yeah. with the small game you're not gonna make that exactly sale. And, and so there's two ends to this thing there's one end where it's you got to chase the shark be chasing a shark or two because it could pop and change your life and also be chasing around the small deals religiously right because the small deals are going to make it possible to actually close the shark when it happens yeah. and if you only chase small deals you may be selling yourself short because you won't get the big pot and somebody can really cover some ground yeah. but if you only chase the sharks you may go broke before you close the business exactly. then you die <laughs> you know yeah. and, and yeah. somewhere in the middle you have to find the appropriate amount of startup capital whether in photography it's gear um, as an advisor you get your suit right you only need one yeah. it can be your grad suit nobody has to know <laughs> yeah. right Get business cards, doesn't need to be glossy, doesn't need to be ultra thick. Yeah. Okay. That's, uh, get from A to B. If you need somebody to drive you there, fine. If you need to Uber, fine. Get that, take the bus. I've had advisors take the bus. You know, that sounds crazy, but you gotta start somewhere. Yeah. Um, and starting with the low overhead will make you appreciate everything else. Yeah. But it's not just about appreciation, it's about putting in the hours to get good at it. Yeah. There's no point of getting in front of a multi million dollar client and you don't know how to talk. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So that's and a big deal. Going back to low overhead and talking about photography, it's actually, I'm gonna get some flack for this about the wage gap and all that, but operating costs are actually for a photographer lower than they've ever been. You don't have to buy film. Cameras now are being produced at a mass consumer level for cheaper. Back, mind you, back then in like the 90s and before that, the going rate, the day rate of a photographer was about $2,000. 
And that's because it was more rare. It was more of a specialty. Now with digital and consumer, everybody thinks they're a photographer. Oh yeah, like and me. Yeah, you're, you're a photographer. <laughs> you'll go down the road, you'll do buddy's headshot for 50 bucks, right? It'll yeah. look like shit, but you'll do it for 50 bucks. And I'll make it might bucks. look okay, you'll make 50 bucks, right? right? And, I'll and he'll yes. never go get a professional, mm. right? And it's sad, it's a problem. So you really need to get people to see value in your work and so that they'll pay the price. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's that low overhead though. So there is a really low overhead now. Okay, in, so, uh, so what about- Film and video, like storage is so cheap now. You can get storage on the cloud. For, okay, yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna mention that too. Um, okay, so let's say that you have the skills to do you know, great photo shoots. You have some of the startup. Seems like you have everything figured out, but actually it's a real person, a client that you have to interact with. Yeah, absolutely. And those social skills could also make or break your business. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So why don't you walk me through, I guess, that journey for you, starting from the beginning, and um, I guess some of the struggles. Yeah. Well, I've always found it hard. Probably why I went to photo and video is because I've already, I've always found it hard to talk to people, mm -hmm. to be dead honest. Growing up, like, uh, I was that quiet kid, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I believed I could be successful, just doing my own thing. I don't need to show everybody. I don't need to talk to anybody. But as soon as I realized I want to run my own business, it was like, shit, mm -hmm. I get social fast. <laughs> and I still, I still get nervous. And I think that's healthy. I think everybody yeah, should get a little sure. bit nervous. Sure. It keeps you on your A game, uh -huh. right? Just that right amount of nerve. It's something. the edge. If you, if you yeah. listen to like, a, from my experience, a financial planner who's been in it for 30 years, sometimes even if they know the game, which by the way, I will disagree. If they know the game better than me, I don't agree with them. But <laughs> let's just say they know the game better than me. Sometimes they're so comfortable uh, and they have no fear of paying yeah. for anything. Yeah. Everything is just so flat line for them yeah. that they'll lose business to me yeah. because I want it so bad. And that fear yeah. actually will yeah. make me fight yeah. for a clientele. So I think the fear is- If it's the between groceries tonight or no, yes. then yeah, you're gonna make that fucking sale one way yeah. or another. And we yeah. still have the the young, I would say, uh, sort of ambition, energy level that, hey, maybe I'm gonna run this whole thing. Maybe I'm gonna be yeah. the next big thing. You know, and by the time you hit 60, as a financial planner, you kind of give that one up at some point along the way, you know? If you're making 150K a year as a financial planner, you've been doing it for 30 years, at some point you accepted you weren't gonna be a multi-billionaire, at least in this industry, yeah. you know? So it's good to have that fear, to have that, that edge. So what, what sorts yeah. of things have you so, done to, to improve those Yeah, so to combat that, I went to as many social events as possible. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, photography clubs are a great way to do it. When, you, when you're starting to open up, it's, definitely best to start talking to other people with common interests was like right where I started. This is like basic base, right? So I just started hanging out more with people, talking to them more, all people who know photo and video, we learn stuff from each other and all that. Yeah. And then that helped me a lot in terms of talking to people so I could start going to like events. Mm -hmm. And then from there, yeah, I started to go to all these photography events, gallery openings, uh, uh, like meet and greets and conventions and stuff like that. And you meet a lot of people that do that too. But the thing is that people don't realize is you don't need to meet more people in your industry because people in your industry aren't paying you to do anything. They're doing it themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So it's always good to have contacts in your own industry and everything, but you need to get outside of your circle and outside of your comfort zone. And generally I found the further you go outside of your comfort zone, the more rewards you're gonna get. As long as it doesn't break you. As long as it doesn't break you. It's yes. breaking many a man. Yes, it <laughs> has, yeah. So, yeah, because my comfort zone, it's all film people. All my friends are film people, photo people. And then it was once I stepped outside of that, my first client was actually a horseback rider. And I did photos, portraits of her and her horse. And that cell, I just came and I was like, hey, I'm just learning and this is what I'm doing. And then I got that job and I made a big mistake because I charged for it. I charged $50 for it, right? And I got my $50, took that photo for it. And now $50 is the most amount of money I will ever get out of her. Mm. So what a lot of people don't realize is that your $100 client, your $500 client never turns into your $8,000 client. Never happens. So when someone approaches you, you can say, okay, look it, 
politely, you cannot afford me right now, but I'd like to do this for my portfolio. So we're going to do this for free uh, under the conditions like I can leave. You know what I mean? Like this is like a favor. Yeah. I'll do this for free. When you have the capital, this is the amount of money that's going to start to come into effect. Yeah. And they will pay you. The longer you can hold out, the more money you're going to make in the long run. Mm -hmm. Photography. An example is I was working for lorilocate.ca. Yeah. I did a free commercial for them. And then they hired me sort of like, okay, not a lot of money to do their headshots and their whole office. And it's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to do it for free. So I did it for free, outfitted their whole website. Three months later, bring, 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 bring. Okay, how's it going? Yeah, we've got a law group that wants you at 5,000 and they're gonna pay the bill. So if I had diminished the, the value of yeah, the work initially, that. they would have went, oh yeah, we got a guy, yeah, it works for $1,000. So that's part of how you make more money is uh, quote higher and don't never quote low never quote low because mm -hmm. you're basically saying my work is worth this um it's better to show them that you'll sweat for them too so. yeah, yeah. Right, every time that you do try to describe your sales process i'm trying to create common ground related to mine because there's so much overlap that it's <laughs> yeah. really blowing my mind yeah. it's all sales the exact equivalent would be an advisor who's inexperienced tries to max out insurances max out investments max out you know refinances to squeeze every penny out of a close from one client and they won't get a referral. Mm. So the difference between one and two clients is literally double slash triple the money depending on the client size. So, yeah. I mean, you can get 3,000 off that one client or 5,000 off that one client or when people send referrals, they don't normally send one. They send you a list of 10. Yeah. It's 10X the income. <laughs> yeah. Just don't be it's wicked. Just yeah, don't it's be all word of mouth. Yeah. And that comes back to talking to people and everything, which is what we were sort of still talking about, yeah. is it was so important to have a good impression. Mm -hmm. Because you could be the best photographer in the world, but honestly, it has nothing to do with skill. I've seen some awful photographers <laughs> make an amazing living doing photography. Mm -hmm. And I've seen some amazing photographers make no living doing photography. And it comes down to your people skills and your business skills. Mm -hmm. Both of which I'm living, breathing proof that those are teachable. Skills, it's right on your arm. Skills are a choice, mm -hmm. right? If you're born and you don't have that business inclination, you don't have yeah. that, oh, I'm a social butterfly, I'm a super extroverted person, there, there are ways for you to get out of that, right? In our, and, in our team, at the end of our trainings, what we do is we bring all the new advisors into a room and we have them present to each other. Mm. an open yeah. that you would normally open a client nice. and there's upsides and there's downsides the upside is it's in a comfortable environment where if you fall on your face you're not losing any money yeah. you're going to be here anyways so that was losing time. that was school for right. me we were doing critiques and critiques were crazy mm. so you hand in your work and they put them it up on the big projector in front of the entire class yeah. they're all looking at your work and then you get a bit of time to defend yourself you get to explain what you're doing yeah and then people rip you a new asshole. Yeah. And that gives you that tough skin that you need in photography. I think as an artist, artists like things their way and all that. And then you get a client and they tell you to do it a million different other ways. And you need those people skills. That's mm -hmm. sort of an amazing book is called Thanks for Thanks for the Feedback. That's a really good book. It's about taking constructive criticism yep. properly. And it's something all artists should read. Right. Anyway, so yeah. yeah. So you so you did that. That was your equivalent in school, right? Yeah. So you guys are yeah. putting it up there. In school. So, so the upside is everybody. it's a comfortable yeah, environment. Practice. It's not really money on the line. Downside is um, is something more intense, more uh, purifying what doing in front of a real client and failing. Because yeah. if you lose a client one way, it's very diff it's very unlikely that you lose another client the same way. Because yeah. it hurts. It stinks. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh yeah. And you don't really get I'm that lost. pain yeah. if you do it with your friend. Yeah. But at least it's more comfortable. So yeah. we we do do that. And I was thinking about you know what would be the equivalent in, in your industry. But I guess that's what it is. Yeah. You guys posted up in school. Yeah. And uh, I lost a pretty big client. I had a bunch of music videos lined up, like six or seven. Mm -hmm. This guy and everything was going good. And I wasn't keeping my ducks in a row in terms of billing and standard operating procedure. And there was no contract and all that. I was going all loosey goosey. And uh, there was a. I upped the money on him because I quoted too low. 
and it was a panic and I just messed up royally. And the way I presented it, like you're paying more. <laughs> Nobody likes to hear that. And the way you present that is very delicate. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was doing. Bam, lost them so hard, lost thousands. And yeah, exactly. That teaches you way more. Yeah. Way more. That burn teaches oh, yeah. you a lot more. Yeah. yeah. And and the difference between somebody that makes it in sales and doesn't is literally the next 24 hours after you lose a major client. Because 90% of my, I'm gonna call them dead team, people that were gonna become financial planners but got crushed by life, you know, crushed by sales. Yeah. This happened because they thought they had a client, it didn't close, mm -hmm. and it broke them. And the people that are working with me that have survived that first one to two year window after you get your license are the people who lose their client, get so pissed about it, yeah. that they triple down, book mm -hmm. you know three times more clients, and then close some. Mm -hmm. And they overcome that. And then that's the difference, I think, between the people that make it in sales and don't. It's how you respond after you get your ass kicked and how yeah. quickly. Yeah. You know, do you take 48 hours off to pout in your room? Yeah. Or are you already booking mm -hmm. more clients two yeah. minutes later? Yeah. Right, that's the difference yeah. I think in me. My I always I would say we either win or we learn. We never mm. lose. Yeah, yeah. So if you can if you can learn from what you did, then you're not losing. Mm. And people aren't gonna like you. People aren't gonna like your shit. People aren't gonna like your photography. Mm. And if people don't like your photography, either you're shit or you're in a niche. And if you're in a niche, that's even better. Because you get more work from that. And that's actually one of my biggest weaknesses. I'm preaching that you need to be in a niche to make the most money. Yeah, um, but you're broad. But I'm super broad right now. Yeah. I'm still figuring it out. I've been at it for five so years. I am so broad. And people don't know. They're like, do you do music videos? Do you do corporate videos? And unless it's a referral, they don't entirely know what I do. And that is a major detriment to yeah. Um, say, yeah, from people coming through the door, right? But all my business comes from referrals, so I don't really have to worry about that, to be honest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> At the moment. But to, to um, scale this but, thing. But to scale this thing, once yeah. I branch out as a more of a production house, we're rebranding as a crew productions, making mm -hmm. a big ten thousand dollar investment into that soon. It's gonna be huge. Okay. And uh, that is to bring in Curtis Hervey. Curtis Hervey, an amazing photographer. Yes. We can link him somewhere. He's the one yeah. doing all my photography. So yeah. I know. Yeah. And uh, he's on the team. We got Adam Stevens. He's really, really good assistant, good photographer mm -hmm. and videographer. So cool guys. Yeah, we're branching out, um, but we really need to find either a niche for all of us or a niche for the company. We really need to figure that out because so we're doing everything from club photo, video. What if there was a company name and, and each of you guys had your own niche? I mean, Subcategories. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna I've run seen your business. that a lot. You can figure yeah. out your own business. Yeah. I need to help you, but I've actually seen that a lot. People, the same business, buying up like three domains. Um, one's a wedding yeah, branch. Cool. One's a boudoir branch. One's a, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's a shootout to Juliet, by the way. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so we're we're killing time here. I didn't know oh, yeah. that quickly. So okay. uh, quickly, you have somebody here who's just starting off in photography. Um, they don't have any any equipment. They don't have any clients or experience, or to be frank, skill set, social skills. Where do they start? Where do they start? Yes. The very first thing you need to buy is a camera. Okay. I recommend mirrorless, it's lighter. How much should they spend? I'm not max? sponsored by Sony, but okay. I, I'd like to see, uh, the lens is more important than the camera. The lens is what makes the camera. If you want to do portraiture, I'd recommend a 50 to a 85 millimeter lens, lowest aperture you can go. Um, hopefully, if you're interested in photography, you know what all this means. But it's mostly about the lens. Then you pick up your body. If I was just starting out, but I want to get paid for it, I'd make a minimum investment of about two grand on that camera. From there, you're set. You can edit photos on any computer mm -hmm. right now. Um, you do need Photoshop. I would go, or Lightroom. Lightroom is really powerful. I'm not a huge fan, but Lightroom is quite good. Okay. Um, that you can get a one-time purchase for CS6 or you pay the subscription. So software actually is one of the highest operating costs for me right now. Hmm. So look for software, look for a way to get it a little cheaper. Um, but I, I'd say Photoshop is a must. Okay. And then just get networking, get talking to everybody, everybody, everybody has a job. And if you don't think that person has a job for you, you're not digging deep enough or you're yeah. not connecting with them yet because everybody 
everybody you meet because try try to go down try to go through your day without seeing photography you know what i mean true like there's ads everywhere photos on business cards photos on websites all that someone has to do those mm -hmm. and that person can be you but you have to let the people know that that could be you, right? Right. So you need to learn how to sell yourself. Make sure everybody knows you're a photographer. Say it till you're blue in the freaking face, yeah. right? Say, this is what I do. I can do that. I can do this. And don't be aggressive. <laughs> but you need to be out there and you need to be telling everybody. And I would you need to be taking every opportunity. My personality type would say yeah. be aggressive. But yeah. Because it, can so be, it can be off-putting. It could but, be. Uh, yeah, but I think it depends on how you justify it, and yeah. I don't want to take too long on it. But somebody would say, you know, I don't like people who pressure. You know, and I would say, um, you know, don't misinterpret my pressure for something that I really believe in. In fact, I would think that you should not trust me if I didn't make you get what I know you needed to have. Absolutely, that would make That's me true. the untrustworthy person. If I know you yeah. needed it, then you should only not trust me if I let you walk away without it. Yeah. That's the way I pivot, <laughs> but that's the sales in me, right? Yeah. So there it yeah, is. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I'm definitely pressuring. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be like, this is what you need. Right. Uh, and if, like, I look at their current website, like I just did a uh, big thing for Feldstein Family Law. We just redid their whole website, mm -hmm. and I was like, look at your photos are shit. Yeah. Like your current photos are shit. Yeah. Sometimes like, that's uh, the right like, tone. Like I just chirp them all day, chirp yeah. them all day, right? And I'm like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Right. And then I swoop in, show them the product. This is what you need. Mm -hmm. Right and just full confidence, a little yeah. bit of pressure, and that's and, and that's it, trusting and it, your it instincts because yeah. yeah. that's not and always that's the right move. And that's a lot of and that's right part move. of how you need to make more money. Circling back to just starting out, you need that mentality. Mm -hmm. You need to believe that your product is good because you can't convince someone right. your product's good until you're fully convinced yourself. Yeah, and something like photography or videography is so subjective, right? Yeah. But you need to believe that the service. At the bare minimum, the service that you're offering mm -hmm. is worth what you're asking. Right. And Grant Cardone would say, you know, if you're not pressuring somebody, it's a shame that you don't have a product that you believe in. Yeah. That's all. That's true. It's as simple as yeah. that. Right. Anyways, let's wrap it up there. Okay. I think that's pure gold. I appreciate right. it. We're good. Great job, Doug. Right. Cool.